Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets for end of day, the Tuesday, 23rd of May, 2017. I'll start off by um, obviously uh, my thoughts and prayers. I think everybody's thoughts and prayers are with those of uh, the people of Manchester, especially the young children uh, and their family members. I have two kids, and the last thing you could think of is your child going out and not returning. So. That's the worst thing in the world. Uh, something that I've been contemplating today as well. Just imagine if your child never came home. Uh, and, and obviously due to this idiot, um, these sick, twisted individuals uh, who use religion okay, to justify their acts. Uh, there's no religion in the world that justifies such... Um, I can't, I mean, how can I even describe it? The fact that you're going to attack children. Now, this isn't the first time. I mean, this has happened in Pakistan. Uh, there was a, um, a potential uh, suicide bombing there just children in school, uh, basically literally going into a school and hence the reason why uh, the story of Malala Yusuf certainly has become very, very popular and uh, something that everybody's aware of, Malala Yusuf. Now, um, it's unbelievable. I mean, I can't even, yeah, what can I say? What can you say uh, other than obviously praying for the those that have lost uh, their children and really just praying that God gives them peace uh, and patience to a large extent. Uh, that's the only thing that they can do now is be patient. And uh, how do we how do we react? I mean, do we act with anger? Do we act with hatred? How how do we react? How do we channel that anger? And and really, there's there's nothing that I can say really un until you experience it. And and if you were to lose your child, and, and that that in and of itself is unique to you. And the only thing we can do really is, is support them, uh, pray for them, and uh, really just remember them. Really, I think there's a vigil today uh, at 6 p.m. in 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 Manchester from six till seven. Uh, those that will be having a, uh, I think it is a 10 minute silence or a 5 minute silence and again you can do it individually at your, at your own house as well and really it's just a, a tribute really from the start of this video to those that have uh, lost uh, a loved one especially children uh, in, uh, in the event last night I mean it's uh, nothing short of tragic, uh, sickening, barbaric I mean there's no way you can justify even attempt to even understand it and that's something for me it's very very, it's a shock really especially given the fact that I live in Manchester as well and and I was out there on the, over the weekend with my children as well, so it really is a shock, and, and there's nothing else we can say. I mean, let's just hope. Uh, I mean, the, the actual individual itself, has, I think, has been identified. Um, some young kid uh, who's been brainwashed, obviously. I mean, why would somebody born and bred here uh, do something like that? I mean, it's shocking. It really is shocking. It just doesn't really make sense to me. Um, I'm a Muslim, okay? I've never been taught to uh, engage in any type of violence. I mean, if anything, I follow the Sunni or Sufism school of thought. And um, I, we engage in uh, homeless feed every Fridays. We try and help our kith and kin. We respect our neighbors. We respect everybody in our community. We work hard. We try and be a uh, positive contribution to society, etc., etc. I mean, uh, why these individuals would go and do something like that is just, you can't comprehend it. It's illogical, irrational. I mean, it's... You have to be seriously disturbed uh, to do something like that. And really, it's a parent's uh, obligation as well to actually look after their children, guide their children, know where their children are. Uh, and really, it's a, it's a shame. And and really, I mean, what can we do? What can we say to the parents? It's, it's just, just, no, I've got no nothing to say. I mean, all I can do is, I've ever since yesterday, I mean, I think I woke up at three in the morning and I was looking at the news and I was in shock. And that's all I've been doing. Literally just been contemplating that today. And just been in a total state of shock and you can't even comprehend it it's just what can i say okay we have to move on now we have to carry on with our lives uh, we have to try and be positive okay we need to channel our anger and our frustration uh, and remain patient to a large extent uh, and really it's our job now to educate the youth and help the youth and, and guide them to the right way not one of extremism and radicalism I and mean, with brexit as well you've got a lot of youngsters now uh, becoming radicalized and extreme uh, in terms of, I mean, you've got the, the error of Mr. Trump as well, uh, xenophobia, racism. I mean, it's just, I think two of two mosques were attacked today as well. One in Oldham, one in Glasgow. So, uh, and apparently the uh, the police have certainly alerted all the mosques locally as well. Apparently there's revenge attacks in the mosques now. So it really is, I mean, I think it's, it's the moderates from both sides that certainly need to come uh, and advance forth and, and try and uh, obviously neutralise the situation. And all we can do really is from, from being a Muslim, being a citizen of the UK and somebody who lives in Manchester as well, is pray for those that have fallen, 
okay, and respect and help anybody in any way you can, help your city in any way you can. And that's all we can do at present, really, and, and pray. That's one of the biggest things that we can do is if our hearts and our minds are with those uh, that have fallen, have lost, uh, especially uh, the uh, the actual parents who've lost their children. I mean, it's shocking. It's the worst thing. I have two children, six and four. And if I were to lose them, I mean, it's just unbelievable. How would I react? How would you react? And it's shocking. Okay, that's all I can say. Shocking, especially when it's on your doorstep. I mean, we read it in the newspaper every day in Syria, how many millions have lost their lives in 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 Iraq, how many millions have lost their lives? I mean, it's just shocking, crazy, absolutely crazy. Okay, but again, prayers go out to those, uh, and uh, our thoughts, prayers, uh, dedication, devotion, in any way whatsoever, uh, really. And let's just pray that God increases peace, uh, and God increases love. Uh, we all have peace and love for one another. We have respect for one another, and uh, we we learn to live um, with mutual respect. Okay. Okay, folks, let's move on to the actual um, trading now uh, with regards to uh, European markets today. Let's look at the actual, uh, uh, the, the actual stats for the day uh, in terms of European markets. Uh, the FTSE itself, I think towards the end, we certainly did finish negative. Uh, let's just bring up the stats here. Okay, so FTSE 100 finished down to 7 out of 7, 4, 8, 5. The DAX finished down 40 points at 12,660. 12, the CAC finished at 5,350. The FTSE MIB uh, finished up 97 points. So certainly shaking off the weakness. Now, in terms of economic data, let's go through that. First of all, Asian markets overnight were certainly negative going into the actual session itself. Shanghai down, Nikkei down. But that certainly hasn't had any effect at all on US markets, okay? And that's due to a number of reasons, okay? First of all, let's start off with European markets. Uh, German GDP came in line. Uh, CHF trade balance came in slightly weaker. French data came in more or less in line and slightly stronger. German services came in in line slightly stronger. European economic data mixed more or less in line overall, all indicating potential growth. Okay. <clears throat> UK data, CBI data came in slightly weaker. Okay. Uh, and then we had Redbook sales came in uh, more or less in line. Okay. Uh, Cash Coy didn't say anything important. UK, uh, US manufacturing PMIs came in on slightly um, more or less in line one of them actually missed uh, as well bear that in mind new home sales came in weaker as well so therefore that's negative the Richmond Fed came in negative as well and now we await the API data API data is at 21 39 30 p.m. so let's see how we react there we have two Fed members Mr. Kashkari again speaking at 8 p.m. and then we have Mr. Harker Harker will be the one that we need to focus on and we'll see exactly how Mr. Harker reacts okay in terms of the uh, in terms of the U.S. markets as far, really the focus has been on the budget deficit and we certainly seem to have closed the gap. If you bring up the S&P 500 here, you can see that we've actually closed the gap now on the S&P. Closed the gap at 2400, okay. So gap fill, uh, so that whole sell-off certainly negated, okay. Impressive, impressive rally to say the least, okay. So again, just about to close that gap at 2400. Going to a 10 minute chart, and your gap was exactly at 2400, and that has closed. So, certainly gap fill resistance now on the SP. Let's see how the market reacts there. Taking your pivot highs, connecting them together, you do have resistance at this region. So, looking for a potential pullback on the SP. We have two unfilled gaps one at 2381 and the other one at 2365. So, keep an eye on those in terms of the next potential market move. Okay, looking at the German DAX now. Now the Euro USD certainly was pushed higher yesterday and that was led by higher by Miss Merkel's comments today. Obviously stronger economic data over the overall for the Eurozone. Increases the uh, likelihood of a potential ECB uh, hawkish stance and a rate hike, so bear that in mind, okay. Uh, 60 minute chart, uh, the actual uh, German DAX has remained below the uh, FIB at 61 to 75%, so again, certainly needs to be respected. So keep an eye on that in terms of the uh, next potential market move. Okay, so again, still a bear flag formation with stronger euro hurting exports. Okay, even though economic data certainly has come in stronger. The German DAX certainly put in a double, double top at 12,700 even before it eventually sold off towards 12,630. Okay, so double top certainly in. Looking for a potential mini HNS formation here as well. Obviously, with terror concerns with the uh, SP now into resistance, NASDAQ into resistance as well looking for a potential move lower okay so bear that in mind in terms of the um, 
in terms of the actual uh, CAC, let's bring up the French CAC for you here. Okay, so French CAC daily chart starting off here. Okay, still meandering, still slightly weak. We did put in a potential topping tail there as well on the daily. Okay, looking at the 60 minute chart. Okay, again, you, you've held Fib 75% on the French CAC holding previous support equals resistance again so looking for weakness on the French CAC here 10 minute chart we put in a potential double top intraday okay on the French CAC so it certainly needs to be respected uh, and then looking to we are certainly flush lower from 5365 down to 5340 okay so we do have an unfilled gap below at 5290 so bear that in mind stronger euro certainly expected to hurt the uh, equity markets in terms of the FTSE 100, FTSE 100 certainly uh, remains stellar. Okay, st still remains stellar. We did put in a potential topping tail towards the end, but we actually hit 7520, which again is very impressive if you think about it. I mean, we had the um, 7522 as the upper body. 60 minute chart on the FTSE at the moment, certainly a potential double top scenario looking for weakness. We'll see whether or not weakness continues and persists. We did get a sell off towards the close though. There is an unfilled gap below at 7470, so just bear that in mind. That gap still needs to close on the downside, so therefore looking for weakness on the FTSE itself, okay? Especially given the terror concerns. Especially given the terrorist concerns, obviously ongoing, and uh, the um, uncertainty with regards to May's election as well, especially a U-turn, budget concerns as well. We did actually get a widening of the budget deficit today as well, and that certainly isn't good news. In terms of the uh, euro stocks, last but not least, let's bring up this stocks, okay? So you can see in the daily chart, we're into that FIB 61%, so looking for weakness. Okay, daily chart still remains weak. Potential there for a HNS formation, so keep an eye on that. Okay, 10 minute chart at the moment, you've put in a double top intraday. Now looking for a lower high and then looking to flush lower down to uh, 3570. So certainly looking for risk aversion here. Okay, I think that's a good summation really of European markets uh, from my perspective looking for weakness, especially given the fact that we have terror concerns. The budget itself certainly was a bit of a failure, it was a flop. Weak economic data overall for the US as well, especially in terms of home sales and looking for the markets to move lower, lower especially given the S&P 500 into gap fill. Uh, again, my thoughts, my prayers and condolences go out to all the loved ones, uh, especially the youngsters uh, that have obviously parents, uh, especially if they've, they've lost their family members really i mean it's something that you can't even comprehend and what what they'll be going through again so again my thoughts prayers are with them and let's just pray for peace let's pray for tranquility let's pray for mutual respect let's fight against racism let's fight against hatred let's fight fight against xenophobia any forms of bigotry really okay um and prejudice okay folks pray for peace love to all and respect to all goodbye now